Hello everyone and welcome to Cineful Gaming. I hope you're all staying well, I hope you're all staying safe and most of all I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video is a Black Library review and today we're checking out Angron the Red Angel by David Geimer and as always I like to listen to the audiobooks while I'm doing hobby and other stuff so we are having this one narrated by Andrew Wincott. Um, now before we get into the video I want to say the narration and the additional sound effects in this audiobook absolutely are fantastic and added so much. Um, Andrew did a fantastic job at bringing some of the, um, I guess, crazy aspects of the world eaters to life in this. There was so much well done with the narration. I would almost recommend go and pick up the audiobook over the physical book. I know that's not maybe right, or at least pick up the physical book and then go get it cheaply on Audible or something, but the audio version of this was absolutely amazing i really really enjoyed this i put this right up there with stuff like triumph of saint catherine it had so, so many subtle little touches to it that just makes it enjoyable in a different way to the actual book but with that said uh, let's get cracking on into the story this is what we're checking out today and so, our story. In the darkness of Imperium Nihilus, across half a million worlds cut off from the dim light of holy terror, a beacon is lit. The Red Angel returns to an unsteady galaxy, and his scattered sons heed the call to slaughter. Aboard the World Eater's flagship, Kossalax the Forsworn, self-appointed Lord Regent of the Seventh, fights to keep the old dreams of the Legion alive, but finds the return of his hated father, both an opportunity and a threat to the warriors' fragile unity. Marooned on a worthless moon with a ragtag band of traitors as despicable as himself, Orton Ledus of the Angels of the Grail dares to dream of something greater. And half a galaxy away, Gracias Talibane of the Grey Knights has been readying himself for the day and plans six centuries in the making are finally set in motion. Plans that will see the eradication of the Emperor's greatest mistake once and for all. And so, this story's purpose. Now, I guess the title of this can be a little bit deceiving. There are certainly scenes with Angron, the Demon Primarch, the Red Angel, the Emperor's Fallen Son, um... In here, there are certainly scenes of Angron, but I think the title is maybe a little bit deceiving in that it's not actually about Angron truly. The story here really takes effect and looks at both followers, those devout, um, those maybe allied to him, those maybe seeking his favour, um, or those you know directly opposed to him. It takes a look at their stories and how... Angron's return to the galaxy affects them both in how they sort of see the galaxy, their response, what their responses to him returning will be, and what the feelings of, you know, his return to the galaxy are as well. It's mostly, you know, those major players around Angron, both for and against him, that are taking centre stage within this story. And so we really do follow three stories in here. We have Koslax the Forsworn, who's sort of appointed himself as leader of the World Eaters. Um, he effectively, throughout the story, will, I guess, take control of most of the Legion in this. Um, he's maybe a little bit more level-headed than a lot of other World Eaters, and he's really sort of trying to steer the ship. And, you know, he wants the power. He has a love-hate relationship, I guess, with his uh, gene father, Angron. Um, seeing him, you know, as both a threat to his own status and power, um, but also as the to the unity and the control of the world is. You know, Angron back means, are they going to just lose control and become these savages once more? Orton Ledus, I think, for me, is the most interesting story and the most interesting character. He is a fallen Blood Angel successor from the chapter known as Angels of the Grail. Um, and so, this is a really interesting... His whole thing um, is, you know, he wants Angron's favour. He wants to become a world eater. He doesn't want to be an Angel of the Grail anymore. And then you have, um, we last have Graukis Telamane, which is a Grey Knight, and they're pretty much, you know talking really about how they sort of bound him or they you know defeated him upon uh armageddon before and so it's really sort of taking that next level um can they repeat these feats that they've done before you know these plans since they've defeated him on armageddon what are they going to do about him coming back again 
And so what does change about these main characters over the course of the story? Kosalax really comes through like a lot of trials. Like I said, he's really trying to gain control. Most importantly, trying to gain control of the Conqueror, which is Angron's flagship. Um, there's this ghost that's sort of following him throughout the story. That where, if you are a World Eaters fan, you will definitely know who that ghost is supposed to represent. Um, probably one of the coolest characters in all of the heresy in my mind. But like I said, Autumn Leaders, this I think is the best story going through here. This this fallen Blood Angel successor. Um, and over the course of the story, like he becomes a world eater. Um, you know, he this will be, you know, that is his end goal. And I guess to be a world eater truly, there's one thing missing that he must acquire. Um, and so that's a really interesting story and then Grokus Telomane as well like over the course of the story we start to see you know okay Angwin's back and this whole uh, great rift is a problem because it's making Angron even stronger and so what does this book do well and first of all I want to go back to it because the audiobook for this is absolutely amazing the voice acting by Andrew Wincott is 10 out of 10 um, some of the best stuff I think I've seen in the past year without doubt like this is 10 out of 10 work not just from him but whoever has done the little editing bits and put in you know those tiny little details to really make this book that next level up on the audio version at least um 10 out of 10 like cannot underestimate how amazing this audio version is Secondly, though, this really just showed the impact of Angron's return. I like that we get, you know, this wide variety of different people. Um, and there certainly are other secondary characters that are affected by Angron's return, besides our main three characters as well. But I like this look of these different associated acts, both with, for, against, um, wanting to be with, you know, all these different associated acts with Angron. I like the how we're getting a look at how all these different things are affecting, and none of them are truly the same, which is cool. For me, though, a big one is I really do like Orton Leaders' story. I think it's a really interesting one. I hope that maybe David Geimer gets to write more about Orton Leaders. If I could pick any character in this book to be written about more, it is 100% Orton. Awesome. Um, I think he has a lot to offer as a character going forward. And so, in summary, as I said, the title is maybe a little deceptive. It's not about Angron per se. It's not, you know, from his point of view. But Thoroughly enjoyable story, nonetheless. Like I said multiple times, I enjoyed the audio. I enjoyed later um, leaders. Um, not too long in the tooth as well. This was a pretty nice sort of time for an audiobook, which I think is nice. It keeps the beats coming quick and fast throughout it, which keeps it very engaging. You know, it sort of swaps around those characters at nice points in time and keeps all those stories going. There's very little sort of, I guess boring downtime that doesn't need to exist um which is really cool so all in all this was really enjoyable if the title is not maybe a little bit uh misleading deceptive or whatever you want to call it um but thoroughly enjoyable nonetheless and so that's the end of the video thank you all for watching we hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to leave a like subscribe and why not consider joining our patreon or youtube members on the channel as well you can find the link to both patreon and youtube members and indeed our merch stores on teespring and kofi down in the video's description as a special thank you to everyone for supporting us on Patreon and YouTube members, we'd like to give them all a shout out. So thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, Soren, Kenny Lowe, Alan Shot First, Andrew Bowen, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Anthony B, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Benjamin Swallows, Red Martin, Iron Grinch, Nicholas Colomos, Colorblind Magic, Daniel Etherington, and Andy C. And to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Ronya, Lock Loric, The Johnny84, David Ellsworth, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop, Terrain, John Castle, Davis Weir, James South, James Tillman, Dylan Arino, and Gargamel 196. Lastly, a special thanks to Lady Witchfox Art, who does all the amazing artwork for our channel, and indeed to everyone who helps come on and do battle bots, and to all the people who help run our Discord server. Thank you all once again, everyone, for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.